Hi, I'm Leandro Levorio from the Theoretical and Computational Physics Group at the Scientific Computing Department in the Science and Technology Facilities Council of the United Kingdom. I am currently in charge of the Mune Spectroscopy Computational Project, where we develop software tools for the interpretation of, of Mune experiments. And, and in this talk, I would like to present uh, the method that we use for finding the muon stopping site in, in crystalline materials. And also, I'd like to briefly discuss the theoretical basis for this method and also to show how um, this methodology has been implemented in the web-based workflow management system and graphical user interface called uh, Galaxy. Um, the tools developed by the Muon Spectroscopy Computational Project are shown uh, here. And in this talk, I will focus on PyMuon Suit, which is the tool we use to find the stopping sites of muons in, in crystalline materials. And in particular, I will focus on how to use the implementation of, of PyMuon Suit in the in the Galaxy platform. Now, uh, let me start with some of the key, or perhaps the key theoretical concept behind the, the method, which is the use of the unperturbed electrostatic potential of the, of the host material. In this paper here at the bottom, um, there is a detailed description of how the method works and how it is implemented. But here, I will focus uh, on the main ideas that differentiate our, let's say, variant of the amperturb electrostatic potential method from the classical amperturb electrostatic potential method, or UEP method. Um, the classical UEP method scans the electrostatic potential looking for minimums in it, which are associated to the stopping site of orthomeomas. Uh, our, our method does, let's say, a further classification of those uh, minima by estimating its attractor side. So if you look at this picture here on the top left, the two minima have a similar values, but the capacity to attract the muon is greater for the minima on the left which makes it more uh, likely to be a potential muon stopping site. And we estimate the probability of a given stopping site by calculating the size of the clusters that form around its associated minimum. Um, this method is quite uh, efficient for scanning the electrostatic potential in a sample and relies on only one density functional theory simulation for the for the host material. And we have tested this method in, in many systems, but uh, we also recommend that the users exercise scientific criteria when analyzing the, the results from this method. Um, and this method is implemented um, via a, a workflow that comprises essentially six steps. Step number one, uh, we run a density functional theory relaxation on the pure host material. Once we have that, in step number two, we populate the interstitial space of the host material with uh, randomly distributed muons. And this image here is just um, for visualization purposes, because what we do in reality, what the code does in reality is to generate a, a set of unit cells, each one of them with a muon in a different place. And then we place all of those muonated structures in folders. And then on each one of these structures, we calculate the electrostatic forces on the muons um, and move the muons in a direction that minimizes those, those forces. And finally, we create clusters using the relaxed structures. And from the size of the clusters and the minimum energy structure in each cluster, we identify potential uh, muon stopping sites. 
And then all of then once uh, all of this was done, and, and assuming that the muon does not perturb the host, so sorry, we, we do all this assuming that the muon doesn't perturb the host. But once the muon stopping sites were identified, then we perform a further relaxation, that is the functional theory of relaxation, to estimate the host distortion. If that's what we are interested in, I mean, if we want to know the way in which the muon distorts the sample. And this is essentially uh, the workflow that you use to apply our method to find the stopping site in, in crystalline materials. Now, if you want to run the method using its command line version, uh, you should you first run the corresponding density functional theory simulation using uh, the cast step code. This is done um, outside in, in a normally in a computer cluster, and we can provide uh, access to the SCARF cluster of the scientific computing department to users of the main source. And once you do that, then you sequentially apply these commands to obtain the potential stop insights, and then relax the final structure to estimate the lattice distortions, again, uh, in a supercomputer. And each of these commands are applied, each of these commands are applied using certain uh, parameters that I will describe in the next uh, slides uh, in the context of, of muon galaxy. So, that was the previous slide show what you have to do if you run your method um, using the command line tools. But if the method is run in Galaxy, well, then the steps of creating and relaxing the random structures are condensed in one Galaxy tool, which is called uh, Pymion Suit Airs UEP Optimize. Uh, and then we run another tool for doing the clustering, which is the, this one in step uh, number four. And, and then we do the density functional theory simulations just as we did uh, before with CASTEP uh, outside of, of Galaxy. So in the next slides, I will describe in more detail each one of uh, the steps in the workflow. And then I will run this workflow in Galaxy. So the first step is the relaxation of the pure host material using the CASTEP uh, code. Um, I should say that you can try not relaxing the sample, just running what we call a single point uh, calculation and see which muon stop inside you find and see if that helps you with the interpretation of, of the muon experiment. But in any case, um, a geometry relaxation is one of the easiest calculations that you can run using a density functional theory code. Um, I should mention also that we in the scientific computing department can give uh, users of the muon source access to the scientific computing department cluster called SCARF and also to the CASTIP code. And we can provide some basic support for CAST for, for CASTIP. Um, a, it's not difficult. I mean, as I said, the geometry relaxation is one of the standard types of density functional theory simulations. However, if you run copper, like the example that I'm going to show you in the next slide, that's that's easy. But if you run something like this, well, relaxing this may be a little bit more uh, difficult. So, as I said, the example that I'm going to show here is based on copper but you will probably have to deal with more complex materials, especially if you do superconductors or complex magnetic materials. Um, and then you, well, run a cast of relaxation in your system. And, and once the relaxation is finished, then we need just three of the files that cast generates to apply our methodology for finding the, the muon stop inside. Those files are the main cast output which is a dot casted file, the file containing the charge density, which we will use for estimating the electrostatic potential, dot then FMT, and then the relaxed structural file, 
for the host, which is the out.cell file. Once we have that, uh, the next step is the creation of the randomly populated myonated structures. And the main parameters um, for this step are connected to how the muons are distributed in the interstitial spaces of the host material. So essentially, um, we have three parameters. The Poisson radius, uh, which controls the interatomic distance between the muons that you put on the interstitial spaces. The Van der Waals scale, scaling factor, uh, which controls the interatomic distance between uh, the atoms of the host and the muons. And then something called the Gaussian width factor, which controls, in a way, the size of the atomic nuclei. Um, we have a 0 0.5 default value for this uh, Gaussian width factor, and it's, it's normally OK. So it's better to try to change these other two values uh, when you do this uh, population of muons in random places of the host material. So better not to touch the Gaussian width factors. Uh, and the values, these parameters, essentially control how many muonated structures are created and how expensive running this system will be. And you can see, for example, if you change the Poisson radius from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6, you can see they have more muonated structures uh, here. And once you have all your muonated structures, the next step is to calculate the analytical electrostatic forces on each of the muons in your structures and move the muons in a direction that minimizes the forces on the muons. And there are two parameters to, to choose here uh, when, when you do the geometry relaxation. One is the maximum number of geometry optimization steps. And the other one is the optimization tolerance to the forces on the muons. Once everything, and, and we run the relaxation, and which is the most expensive computational, from the computational point of view, most expensive calculation in this process. And once and everything is relaxed, we, we have to proceed with the, with the clustering. Um, and for this, uh, for the clustering, the key parameter is uh, the parameter T, which is a sort of cutoff parameters for performing hierarchical uh, clustering in your system. So the larger the T, the larger the cluster form. And then it is possible to save the structural files with the minimum energy uh, of the muonated structures for each cluster. And these are the files that represent the, the potential stopping site. And then finally, once we relaxed and clustered everything, we can create and save um, a structural supercell file in the CASTEP uh, format, for example, in the CASTEP structural format, for, so that we can then later use it to perform a density functional theory simulation to calculate uh, the distortions associated to, to the muon and or um, other properties associated with the muonated material, like, I don't know, the magnetic moment at the muon side, the hyperfine coupling constant for muonium, if, if, if muonium is what we have inside, uh, and things like that. Um, and with this, we have all the information necessary to perform uh, this procedure in, in Muon Galaxy. And in this link here, you can find a Galaxy, Muon Galaxy, and the tools that you need for finding the Muon stop inside using uh, the Galaxy platform. And when you click on the link, you will see the main web page for the for, 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 for materials uh, galaxy. Um, uh, 
So, as I said, uh, you see the main web page of, of materials uh, galaxy. And on the left, there is a list of all the tools available. And when you choose one tool, like the UEP optimized tool, in the certain partner, you will have all the parameters that the tool requires. And the first thing you need to do is you need to load the casted files resulting from the initial casted simulations. Um, and what I'm doing here in this example is I'm loading the relaxed structural file, the file with the charge density, and the main casted output file. And you can see that on the right side of the panel, you have uh, the history of, of, of the process, okay? Every step that you do is collected in this history. And you can see when things are running and if they run okay, meaning you load your file properly, then each step of the history becomes uh, green. Um, and then once you load it, all the files, then you need to choose the parameters for performing the creation and relaxation of the myonated structure. So you choose the Poisson radius, the Van der Waals scaling factors, and then the optimization parameters. And finally, you run your tool. And again, in the history, you see what happens when things are running. Um, it is also possible to choose uh, for the format of the file containing all the generated structures, which can be used to assess, let's say, how well we are covering these statistical spaces for the for the host material. And then we, well, the calculations and launch, we need to wait until this relaxation finishes. This is the most expensive part of the process. Here I'm using a simple example, which will finish soon, but it may take a, a while depending on the size of your system. And then in the history, you see uh, that two new items, okay? And they have turned green. So we have all the relaxed structures and the file uh, containing the position of all the minimums. Um, and the next step is to load all the relaxes, the relaxed structures in the in the clustering tool. Choose uh, the T parameter for hierarchical clustering, and then uh, a format for the minimum energy structures and the size of the supercell that we will require for running the subsequent density functional theory simulations. And then we run the tool. And here you can see that the main output file of the process the main output file of the process, uh, showing, which shows the characteristics of all the, the clusters found. You see, this is the clustering report. Here you found two clusters. Each cluster has 20 structures. You have the minimum and the average energies for those clusters. And something that I'd like to point out is that I choose a, a simple here, a simple system here, sorry, uh, that runs very fast. But as I mentioned before, calculations might take a while, a while a little bit longer, uh, because uh, they are running. But I mean, it doesn't. This is not really a problem for you because these calculations are running on a server, so you launch them and you can you you can just check them periodically to make sure that they are they to check if they they converge or not. But they don't occupy space on your computer or anything like that. Uh, in my experience, the longest that I spent running a relaxation and clustering procedure in Galaxy was overnight. Uh, and finally, once the process is over, well, you can save the entire workflow in, in Galaxy. And then you can, well, you can uh, curate the workflow, save it, and then you can visualize it in a, in a graphical form and see how the different tools are 
connected and which are the parameters that you that you choose for running each one of the tools uh, and also what is it that you did with each tool and this uh, workflow is easy to share among galaxy users and also to run again uh, so for instance you can include this uh, workflow in a paper to show exactly the process that you use for finding the, the neon stopping sites. So you can create, and, and, I, and we will show this in the tutorial, you can create what we call a research object with this workflow. Uh, and you can create a DOI for that research object, save it in a place like Zenodo, for example, and then attach it to a paper. Uh, and you have a very transparent way of informing your readers of what you what you did for finding the immune stopping sites with our methodology. Um, and this is it. Um, I hope this talk, this talk, sorry, gives you a good overview of what our method is and how it works. Um, as I said, we've tested the method in several systems with satisfactory results. And it is a method that can be run from the command line or in the Galaxy platform. The method requires one external uh, density function of theory simulation. Uh, and in the full tutorial online, of which this video is part of, um, we will include more uh, detailed explanations of, and also uh, many examples that you can play uh, with. OK, and I would like to finish by thanking all the people involved in the MUON spectroscopy computational project. And thank you for your attention. I hope you find this uh, video and the whole tutorial useful.